My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. I'm holding in my hand the official guide to the GRE revised journal test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it in order to follow my in order to be able to follow my work. The problem that we, about, that we are about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 146. This is a very similar problem, very similar problem to a problem that appeared in the old version of the exam, which is what I'm holding in my hand here, practicing to take the GRE, the 10th edition. In this book, a similar problem appeared, and I'm going to do that problem first, and then we're going to do the one that we have in our hand here. So I would like you to watch, in addition to the video that you're watching right now, also I would like you to watch, just type in this tag, just type in GRE Math Day 4, page 123. GRE Math as opposed to Revised GRE. Just put in GRE Math Day 4, and if you type in the page number P123 without a space, it will pop right up. So here's the problem. Uh, not the problem that we, that we have in front of us, but a similar problem. Here's the question. So, I'm going to read the problem to you and follow the problem with me, along with me, in your book. I'm going to read it. I'm going to make some changes. It says, in year 2009, the property tax on each home in town X was P percent of the assessed value of the home. Nothing has changed so far. It's this exact same thing, where P, is, where P is a constant. The property tax in 2009 on a home in town X that has an assessed value of 45,000 the tax on 45,000 was $1,200 here's your column A here's your column B in column A we are asked we are given tax on 54,000 and in column B, we are asked, we are given $1,300. You see how similar it is? In the problem that you see in front of you here, in column A, we are given, we are asked uh, to compare the property tax in 2009 on a home in town X. Oh, they have to make it so ridiculously lengthy. That had an assessed value of 160000 So they want you to compare the tax on $160,000 versus $3,000. Before we do that, let's do this. There are two ways you can go about solving this problem. And I'm going to leave it up to you to watch this video, GRE Math Day 4, to understand this question in its entirety. I'm just going to do a quick version here, which is the quick and dirty method. The quick and dirty method is this. This, this is the quick and dirty method. The tax on 54000 whatever the hell it is, has got to be the tax on 45000 plus the tax on 9000 for example if I walk out the grocery store uh, with uh, seven dollars worth of stuff then whatever the tax that I paid on five dollars plus whatever the tax I paid on two dollars has to add up to the tax that I paid on seven dollars assuming that everything is being taxed which is the case here the entire property is the value of the entire assessed value of the property is being taxed so the tax on 54,000 whatever it is has to be equal to Whatever the tax happens to be on 45,000 plus the tax that you will pay on the remaining 9,000. But we know what the tax on 45,000 is. The tax on 45,000, we are told, the tax on 45,000, we are told, is 1,200. So I can replace this. This equals 1,200. Well, this 1,300 can be broken down into 1,200. Plus, I don't know how well you can read this red pen here. It's, it's, it's not writing very well. The tip is gone. The sh tip is shot to hell. Oh, there it is. Here's another one. So, the $1,300, of course, $1,300 equals $1,200 plus $100. But what do you notice? Well, I see 1200 I, I see 1200 here, I see 1200 here, 
a tax on 45,000 which equals 1,200. So I see 1,200 here, I see 1,200 there. It plays no role. It appears in both columns. It plays no role. We can subtract 1,200 from both columns and just ignore it. For example, for example, if somebody asks you which one is bigger, 3 plus 7 in column A versus column B, which is 5 plus 7, which one is bigger? Now, if you could if you wanted to, you could if you wanted to, sit there and add 3 plus 7 is 10 and 5 plus 7 is 12, therefore 12 is more than 10. If you were to do that, then you have missed the entire bloody point of these questions. These questions are called, which is why I wrote down ahead of time, these questions are called, these questions are called quantitative, quantitative comparison, not computation. Nobody's asking you to compute anything. So if you sit there and went 5 plus 7 is uh, uh, 12 and therefore 12 is more than 3 plus 7 which is 10, you missed the point. That wasn't the point. Nobody was asking you what this quantity is. Nobody is asking you what that quantity is. They simply are asking you which one is bigger. So because 7 appears in both columns, you can just subtract 7 and therefore 5 is more than 3. I gave you a very simple, very ridiculous example to drive the point home, which is exactly what this is here. We have 1200 here, we have 1200 there, that 1200 plays no role. So basically what we are being asked here is to compare the text on 9000. We are asked to compare the text on 9000 versus 100. That's what we are asked. This versus this. This part disappears. I'm going to erase it so you can see it. This part, well let's not erase it. We are asked to compare this versus this. Now text on 9000 has to be 9,000 we know, 9,000 we know is a fifth of 45,000. Therefore, tax on 9,000 must be, that's a must, tax on 9,000 must be a fifth of 1200. One more time, I'm going to explain it. So now the question is, what is the text on 9000? Well, the text on 9000, whatever it is, because 9000 we know is exactly a fifth of 45,000, therefore text on this amount, 9000, must be a fifth of the text on this amount, 45,000. That's what it says. Therefore, this means therefore, this symbol means for those of you who do not know, therefore, therefore, the tax on 9000 must be a fifth of 1200. But we know, we know that. Now I'm making too much fuss here. I'm not going to write everything down. I'm making too much fuss now because this otherwise will never get done. A fifth of 1200 is more than 100. I'm just going to quickly explain to you orally. We know that a tenth, listen carefully, we know that tenth of 1200, what is the tenth of 1200? Well, tenth of 1200 is 120. If tenth of 1200 is 120, then the fifth of uh, one twelve, tenth of 1200 is 120, therefore the fifth of 1200, whatever the hell it is, is going to be more than 100. As a matter of fact, it's going to be twice as much. If, see, I'm going to do it here. A tenth of 1200 is 120. Therefore, a fifth of 1200 must equal 2 times 120. Why? Because a fifth is twice twice of tenth. That's all. And therefore, a fifth of 1200, whatever it is, it's got to be more than 100. Therefore, this quantity, the tax on, on 9000, is the fifth of the tax on 45000, which is a fifth of 1200, and the fifth of 1200 is more than 100. Therefore, the answer is A. Now, it took a long time for me to explain everything because I was explaining every excruciating detail, every excruciating step in it. But if you understand the concept and if you understand the logic, you will find that it goes very fast. It goes very fast if you just solve it logically. 
you understand? I'm going to get out of the frame for one second here because I want to see how much time I've taken and then I want you to pause at this point I want you to pause the video and do the problem that you see in front of you using the same logic and the same method see what you can do and then resume the video after you have solved it this way, the quick and dirty way instead of the classical way, the traditional way, the orthodox way which I'm going to do tomorrow I'm going to get out of the frame for one second pause the video and do the thing what you have in front of you I'll be right back alright so that was it now let's do the problem that we have in front of us and that problem I'm going to do it in a, in a hurry I'm going to do it a, a, with a little bit of speed I'm not going to explain everything it's the exact same logic it's the exact same logic that we applied here that it's going to apply there so here it is we are told we are told that tax on 125,000 is 2,500 that's, that part we are told this is, this is given to us this is given to us in column A we have tax on 160,000 and in column B we have $3,000 okay now as I said I'm going to do it a little bit faster tax on 160,000 whatever it is it's got to equal the tax on 125k plus the tax on 35k why because 125 plus 25 is 150 plus another 10 is going to make it 160 and this we know can be broken up into 2500 plus 500 why am I breaking up uh, why, why am I breaking up to, to 3000 into 2500 and 500 and not 2100 or 2999 and just one dollar why am I breaking up in such a way because that's the whole point because now I'm looking at my, my cap here which is why I look distracted here there you go because that's the whole point here because now we know that the tax the tax on 125,000 is $2,500 so this amount whatever it is the tax this dollar amount here the tax on 125,000 which is equals which equals to 2,500 so 2,500 appears here 2,500 appears here it plays no role so basically what we are being asked here is to compare the tax on 35,000 versus $500. We're not done yet. Tax on $35,000 can be viewed as tax on $25,000 plus the tax on $10,000. Well, how much is the tax on $25,000? Tax on $25,000 tax on $25,000 must equal a fifth of whatever the tax was on 125,000. This should say 125, not 12k. It's a good thing I caught myself. Because 25, 25, 25 is a fifth. 25 is a fifth of 125. So whatever the tax is on 20, 125,000, whatever the amount of tax is on 125,000. A fifth of that amount must be the tax on 25,000 because 25,000 is a fifth of 125,000. And how much do you suppose a fifth of $2,500 is? Well, $500. A fifth of $2,500 is $500. That, that crosses out this guy. Oh, I shouldn't have done it the same way because now you can't sell this step here. I should have done it in a different way. Let's do it in a different way so we can distinguish this first step with the second step. There we go. So what are we left here? What is the basically what does the question this what does this question basically boil down to? What the question boils down to is this. I'm gonna show you here, I'm gonna put it here separately so we can see it. This is what the question boils down to. They're asking us. In column A, they, they are asking us, they, they, in column A, we have a tax on $10,000. That's our column A. And in column B, we have 
a big fat zero. Can you tell me which must can you tell me which quantity is bigger? A big fat zero or the amount of tax that I'm gonna pay on ten thousand dollars? If you can tell me which one is bigger, you're all set. Answer of course is A. Because I don't care what the hell they, what, what the tax is on ten thousand dollars, I really don't care, I don't want to know. I'm not gonna waste my time trying to figure it out. Whatever the hell it is, it's gotta be more than a zero. That's all. I'm gonna do it one more time quickly so that you understand the logic. We were given we were asked to compute the tax on 160,000. Well 160,000 must equal 125,000, another 25,000, and another 10,000. But we know that tax on 125,000 is 2,500. We also know that tax on 25,000 is 500 because 25,000 is a fifth of 125,000. So there is your $2,500 which is the tax on 125,000 on the 500 which is the tax on 25,000 that's $3,000 already which is what we have in the second column so the tax on the remaining 10,000 I don't care what it is we don't care what it is whatever the hell it is gotta be more than a big fat zero obviously that's all we're done that's it I will see you tomorrow and if you're hell-bent if you insist on it and if you're hell-bent we will do this question the same exact question the proper way the academic way, the orthodox way, the classical way, the traditional way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the mathematical way. We'll do it tomorrow, and as I said, in the proper way. This was just an unorthodox, un untraditional way, quick and dirty way. But the, but the thing with the quick and dirty way is that the quick and dirty way is not going to be uh, quick, very quick if you do not train yourself. You have to train yourself to so look for these this shortcuts. You mustn't sit there and 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 calculate every excruciating step because that's where you end up wasting time. These are called quantitative comparison, as I keep repeating, like a parrot. These are not called quantitative computation. You mustn't sit there and have this uncontrollable urge to immediately calculate the tax on 160,000. I do not care what the tax on 160,000 dollars. Tax on 160,000 must be more than tax on 150,000. Tax on 150,000 is $3,000. We're done. That's it. We're done. It should take no more than a few seconds. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.